Do you see the care of the elderly as being primarily a social um, department's responsibility or medicine's responsibility? Well, medicine really, but only if you can get if you can get it done by doctors like me. I mean, if you if you if you have a purely traditional medical approach, it's not going to work. No. I mean, you've got to be much more interested. I was going to say in function and in diagnosis, but yes. I mean, obviously that's overstating it. No. Right? But but it's more important to to assess the patient's function than it is to make a minute diagnosis yes. yeah. of, of the 15 things that, that the pathologist would be able to demonstrate on the post-mortem table. But it's interesting that, because there's a whole element of medicine, isn't there, which is quite separate from care of the elderly. I mean, alcoholism, anxiety, behavioural problems, yeah. again, yeah. require a particular kind of doctor, yeah. which is yeah. function, isn't it, yeah. rather yeah. than yeah. And drugs, yeah. uh, likewise. You see, you get two patients with identical osteoarthritis of their knee joints and one of them is still playing golf and the other one has been housebound for five years yes. and yet the pathology is identical Yes. and yes. In, in every you know, you could, theoretically they could be identical yes. but it's, it's the other factors the motivation of the patient, their, their pain susceptibility to pain, their, their uh, support they get from others or indeed the overprotection that they get from others. Yes. So that you you know you've got to be you, I, I, the phrase I use think beyond the pathology. Yes. Which is probably not a bad way of putting it. So you came back and and you got the medical students. Yeah. What else did you get? I mean what else, what did, I mean you you achieved so much. Well, by about this time, the a lot of people were looking at, with different gaze upon geriatric medicine as a career. And that was for several reasons. One was that we had made it seem to be an attractive thing. They, they saw that there were a lot of people who they knew to be good doctors, they knew to be good nurses, they knew to be good physiotherapists, who were joining this happy band and, and, and being very successful and very fulfilled. So that people were, by, a, by our example, we were making other people rethink their attitude to this. And of course, as you well know, there were senior registrars doing gastroenterology for whom there was no prospect of them ever becoming a consultant in this country and diminishing prospects of them getting a, consultant, getting a job abroad so that they were looking around for other specialties. And this was, a, a, as we've discussed earlier, this was a particularly easy transition to make if you were of the right mindset that you, were, you weren't just thinking about pathology and traditional therapeutics, if you were interested in all these other aspects of medical care of the elderly, then it, it, it wasn't too difficult to make the, the, the move from your gastroenterology or your cardiology or whatever to geriatric medicine. In and fact, that, yeah. that started to happen, you see, and, and oh, within the space of a year or so, we were having excellent people applying for our for a registrar and senior registrar jobs. What was the setup in ge in geriatrics at the time that you became consultant? Well, really, there were, there were only two consultants. There was Neil McMichael in Longmore. Yes. And Jimmy Williamson, then based at Southfield. And was Jimmy Williamson a professor at that time? Oh no, no, no. Jimmy no. had also made this transition. That's right. He had, he had made the transition earlier from chest medicine. Yes. Now, what Neil McMichael had done his. Had, well, how did he train? What was his background? Well, he was really a private general practitioner. Was he? Yes. I mean, he was a wonderful man, wasn't oh, he? A grand chap. Wonderful yes. gents. Uh, oh, yes, I worked with him happily for um, quite a few years. He must have been a great colleague to have. Oh, yes. A man of great integrity. Yeah. Did he ever get cross? Oh, he could at times, yes. He, oh, yes. But, um, no, by and large, he was, uh, he was a very even-tempered man. Yes. Um, <coughs> he was really the father of geriatric medicine in Edinburgh. Right. He it was who really started it. He started it all in Queensbury House, actually. And um, he, um, he turned Queensbury House from a poor house, literally a poor house, into a geriatric long-stay hospital. And um, 
of course, the improvements came very gradually. It wasn't a popular subject at the time. There was no money put into it. And uh, improvements came very, very slowly. But come, they did. And, and what sort gradually. of improvements were made? What, what were the things that were... What was the revolution? Well, I think it was uh, partly the, the demand by general practitioners the general practitioners for better services for the elderly. Yes. I think that's where the and what were the initial came but, from. But the change was what? What what, what, was, what had been given pre Neil McMichael and pre you? Uh, what did what what was the was it poor law medicine just chucked into a bin and left? That's right, absolutely. And tender care and uh, there was no sorting out of the. Uh, degrees of severity of uh, impairments in old age. Did you work out, I mean, did you have to work out a structure of, um, that was new? Did you? Yes, entirely. Oh, yes. Yes, it was quite an exciting business, you know. Um, and was that the three of you, Jimmy, Neil, Jimmy, and you, uh, or largely? Well, uh, um, uh, what, um, Neil? Cliff, Cliff um, Lowther. Yes. He, he, he became a consultant with Jimmy, so there were then four of us. Yes. Another clever man. Another good chap, yes. yes. Oh, yes, a good chap. Yes. Yes, Tony Lather. Yes. And so you, you set up a grading system. Yes, an assessment. Yes. You know, we really looked at old people seriously. Yes. And found out what their disabilities really were. Yes. and what the residual capacity was yes. and how you could build on that to try and restore a degree of independence to them. Right. And it was remarkable how often one could do that even with someone who appeared to be a totally hopeless proposition Yes. at first sight. And the team that you built up, did that include social workers? Yes, or? indeed. Social workers and physiotherapists and occupational therapists, speech therapists. Yes. So this was the beginning of the concept of a team rather than the consultant as a isolate and... That's right. He yes. was a member, but only a member of a team. Yes. An important member, but... And we, were, we made ourselves infinitely available to the GPs. We, we said patients would be seen the same day, because at that time we were still doing house calls and nearly all cases, which and we, we did an evaluation of that and wrote it up in the Lancet, and that's still, I think, quite a valid uh, critique of, of this system. So the, the speed was important, mm. because if an old lady's not well today and nothing is done till the end of the week, by the end of the week she may have developed pressure damage to her tissues, she may have become incontinent, demoralised as a result of that. All sorts of things can happen which cause a spiralling downwards of her physical, mental and morale. So that if you go along late, you've got to undo all these consequences. And that may be much more difficult than coping with the, with the initiator, which may have been an MI or, a, or an infection, a lung infection or, or just an injury. So that speed is essential. If an old lady's not well today, she should be seen by her GP today. And if he's in any doubt about it, then he should have access to the geriatric team. So that was the, that was the first thing, speed. And then the, the, you, you've got to have the resources, which means if you need to admit the patient, you admit her. And we were admitting, I think it was 91% of patients were admitted same day or the next, within 24 hours. Yes. And that was a major achievement. We were able to do that after I came back from Liverpool by introducing this kind of slimmed down, efficient service. 